Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. So today I'm going to be painting fall birch trees and I'm going to be sipping on my coffee. And if you enjoy this process, I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you're going to find additional painting perks. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm going to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you can certainly switch up the size on this one. and. For my paint, I'm going to be using acrylic paint. My colors are titanium white, burnt umber, which I will call brown, Mars black, green oxide, fire red, and deep yellow. And of course, you can switch up those colors as well if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a angled palette knife. I'm just using a plastic one, but you could certainly use, yours doesn't even have to be angled. I just like to have the multiple angles so I can get different kind of marks, but you can really get away with any palette knife. I've got two brushes. I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush and I have a number 10 round synthetic brush and I'll refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And if you're painting along with me, you'll probably want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes and your tool, and you'll want a paper towel for drying them. And down below this video, I will be providing you with a couple of additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link where you can purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the large canvas, even to my fancy palette that, or my knife that I'm using. Um, so that's there for you. There's also a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're going to need today. All right, so for the first step, what we're going to do is we're going to be painting our background. We're going to be using our large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown and white. And how I'm going to do this is I'm going to have a, a real dark gray at the top. It's going to fade down to a really light, soft, grayish brown down here, and then it's going to go back down to dark gray at the bottom. So what I'm going to first do is pre-mix myself a dark gray color. So I am going to need some of my black later. So I'm going to section or separate some of that for later. I'm going to use the rest of my black. I'm going to add just a little bit of white to it and a little bit of brown and spin it around. That's definitely going to be too dark. I'm going to add a little bit more white than that. And I just add my white a little bit at a time. Let me turn this so you guys can see it a little bit better. I add my white a little bit at a time because I know that the white can really overpower and turn it too light really quickly. So I'm just going to add a little bit at a time. This is getting it into the vicinity that I want. I like um, adding a little bit of brown a lot of times to my gray because to me that just gives it a bit of warmth as opposed to a cool gray. I'm going to make it just a little bit lighter. I know that my uh, gray will turn a little bit darker as it dries as well. So I just plan for that as I'm as I'm preparing my mixture here. I'm going to get it a little bit lighter than I ultimately want it because I know it'll dry a little bit darker. So that's about where I'm headed with my gray. And once you've got it into the color that you want, just making sure I got it all mixed well here. I'm not going to wash my brush. I have that dark gray on my brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a left to right brush stroke and I'm going to bring this dark gray down about a quarter of the way. Then I'm going to start introducing white to it so it gets lighter and lighter. And then when it's down around here, I'm going to be using some white and a little bit of brown and then I'll fade back to that dark. So I've got it really dark up at the top. So I'm just kind of loading this on here with a left to right brush stroke. I'm going to bring this down about a quarter of the way down my canvas. It, and it doesn't have to be a perfect quarter of your canvas, just somewhere in this vicinity will work. 
Once you've got it down about that far, then I'm going to start picking up some white on my dirty brush and get this to start to get lighter and lighter as it comes down my canvas. So when I do a gradient like this, I'll put my lighter color on and then I go back and forth back up into the previous section. This will get them to blend in with one another and you can just kind of keep going back and forth to get them to blend in. And then as I come down, I'll just keep bringing this lighter color down and I'm gonna just keep picking up white with my dirty brush. And what'll happen is it will get lighter and lighter as it's coming down. So I want this forest, this birch forest for us to kind of be able to see through it and make it look all nice and enchanted and like it's a, uh, you know, deep in the woods, but we've got some sort of lightness off in the distance. So that's why I'm having um, this area come lighter and lighter down where that path is going to be going through. So I've got about as light as I want it right now. So I'm going to, once I've got this, um, executed, I will pick up a bit of brown paint and the brown is going to help to give the atmosphere a bit of warmth down in this light area. So I didn't wash my brush. I just picked up a bit of brown paint and this is going to, oh, I had a little bit of extra black within my brush. So I will get that to, that happens to you. Just wipe your brush off on your paper towel. So I had too much black in my, um, in my bristles. So I'm just going to reload with some white put it back on top of that to relighten it, and then I'll add a bit of that brown back if I want, uh, if, I, if I need to or want to. So light, 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 still using a bit of white on my brush right now and getting that, make sure it's as light as I want it. And then in a second here, I am going to start adding back that real dark gray so I can get it to go nice and dark as it goes down towards the bottom of my canvas. I think I want a little bit more brown up here in the light area. So I just added a bit more white with a little bit of brown on my brush because I, I like that hue of the brown in this lighter area just to give add to that little atmospheric dimension in through there so that that makes my painterly eye nice and happy and now i'm going to start adding that dark gray back onto my brush so we can get this forest floor to look really nice and dark and we can have some good depth once we put all of our vegetation down at the bottom of the canvas this dark under coat will help to make that look really nice and dimensional. And I'm just gonna get it to blend in a little bit with this lighter area. You don't have to go too high up the canvas. Again, this is maybe a quarter to a third of the way up your canvas is where I've kind of met that light with the dark. And this doesn't have to be as much of a gradient as up top when you were doing the uh, background um, in the upper region of your canvas. So feel free to explore your um, blending fun abilities in through here. And then we are gonna actually use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this background done, you can put this large brush away wherever you'd like to, take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first step of our background trees. I'm gonna be using my small brush. The colors I'm using are gray, brown, and white. And I do wanna forewarn you that before you start this step that your canvas is pretty dry. It doesn't have to be 100% dry, but pretty dry will, will be um, work easier for you. So this is that time where you get to take that extra long break if you'd like to or you can find some fun fanning method to get it dry, or you can do as I did and just whip out your blow dryer to get it dry. So this, I want this forest to look like it's got a lot of depth to it. So I'm gonna set some skinny trees back in the distance. So I'm using my small brush. I'm gonna be using that dark gray as well as brown and white. So at all times, I just like to pick up those three colors. And what's gonna happen is if I have those three colors on my brush, some of these trees will be light, some of them will be dark, some will be more brown, some will be more gray, and so on and so on. So I want these to come down about two thirds or three quarters of the way down my canvas. So somewhere, I'm just gonna give myself a little marker so I know that's about as far down as I want these to come. If some go a little bit farther, that's totally fine, but that gives me a visual spot. 
I'm going to be moving my brush really fast, going up and down, lots of vertical lines. I want some to be kind of diagonal. I want a couple of little branches to come out, but I don't need it to be 100% rendered at this point because this is really just meant to have these look like they're off in the distance. So got my brush loaded. I'm gonna just kind of start with this really loose kind of brush stroke. I can have some of them coming out the side. Think of this almost as like long grass. A lot of this is going to be hidden by the um, the foliage and some of the trees that are going to be sitting in front of it. So I'm really not looking to have this be anything super perfect. I just want it to look like it's got these trees that are way off in the distance and I want this to look like a birch tree forest. So that's why I'm just using more of this white and gray are gonna be my standard kind of colors that I use throughout this entire painting. And I do want this to look like there's um, some movement in, in these trees. I don't all want them to look super duper straight. I know that birch trees do have a tendency to be on the straighter side, but they do definitely lean over and they can have branches. They can, you know, have some, some difference to them as well. So I'm just going to kind of get a whole bunch of these distant trees in through here. These are going to be more slender than my ones that I'm going to put in the foreground. And of course you can have some light ones and some dark ones and just have fun with this process. And then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step. So once you've got your distant trees on here, have fun with it, make it into whatever you want, but know you're gonna be hiding a lot of this with future steps. So don't, don't labor over it too, too much. And then you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we're gonna do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our leaves on the tree tops. I'm gonna to be using my large bristle brush. The colors I'm using are yellow, brown, and white. So this is gonna be the tree, the leaves that are kind of a little off in the distance, maybe a little bit darker than the end result that we're gonna have later, but it gives, again, that dimensional element to it. So I'm gonna start with some yellow and a little bit of brown on my brush. I'm not gonna be doing a fancy brush stroke. I'm just going to be dotting it. I know that I am going to want my leaves to be heavier or more dense up at the top and more um, transparent or uh, less coming down the forest down towards the floor. So. I'm gonna be dotting a lot at the top. I'm at the moment just gonna alternate uh, yellow and brown to get a good kind of footprint as to where I want these, these leaves to go. And so I'm really dotting pretty darn heavy up at the top and you can leave some peekaboo spots, but right now I know that this paint is translucent or see-through until I start using the white. So I'm gonna be able to see some of these branches through here, but we are going to be putting another layer of branches on anyways. So even if you can see through it, it's all right. So I'm gonna pick up a little bit of yellow and white right now to give myself the start of some brighter leaves, but again, we'll be adding even more to this later. So don't feel like this is gonna be the end all be all. I am bringing some down a little bit in through here. And then when I feel like at this point, I feel like I've got enough on here. What I'm gonna start to do is I'm just gonna use the remnants on my brush. You can even wipe it off on your paper towel to give some really out of focus ones in the background. I think I actually want to wipe my brush off a little bit more on my paper towel because as I come down into this forest, I want it to look like we're seeing stuff that is off in the distance. So I want very little bit of paint on my brush to just give the illusion that there might be some treetops far off in the distance. So I'm just really softly kind of touching my brush with the remnants and giving myself a little bit of these faint yellow brownish kind of spots. And then we're going to be using our, uh, our palette knife for the next step. So once you've got this first layer of leaves, you can put your brush away, take out your palette knife and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're painting a path 
with our knife. So I'm going to be using white and brown paint and I'm going to just have a whole bunch of fun, give this some texture and enjoy the process of a um, unpredictable knife creating some nice, some nice organic type of look to it. So I'm going to put a little bit of white paint just on the edge of my knife. You could really use the long edge or the short edge, or if you don't have a dual edge to knife like I do, you can just put a little bit on the edge. I'm going to be coming up about where my trees are have stopped. That's where I'm going to have this edge over on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, I'm going to have it ending, I would say maybe about two inches up the um, left hand side, as well as if this is maybe the center of your canvas a little bit to the left of the center. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put white and brown on my knife at the same time and I'm going to connect these markers. So I just kind of hold my knife like this. You could certainly hold your knife whatever way you want. You can have it kind of coming in a curve if you want to. You could have a straight path. Whatever works for you visually is totally fine. I'm going to go ahead and connect this top part to this marker in through here because I want my path to look like it's going it's wide here and then it goes and it gets skinnier as it goes off into the distance. So something like this and of course you can manipulate this whatever way you want. So once you've got your kind of exterior what I'm doing is I pick up more brown on my palette knife and I'm just going to kind of give myself some little um, swipes throughout the area. I can then, I had remnants of white on my knife because I didn't wash it. And now I'm putting more white on and just putting some little swipes of white. And then I'm really just going to kind of scrape it back and forth, kind of up and down. And what's going to happen because I have that gray underneath, this is going to provide it with this really cool textured type of look through it. And you could, you know, have yours thick looking like impasto kind of paint where you see the texture of the paint. But I really like to kind of scrape it like this, especially when I have that nice dark um, color underneath because it allows for me to see some of the those tones of the gray underneath. And then I'm just going to kind of finish it up in through here. Most of this part of the path will be hidden behind our trees anyway, so you can certainly get it to um, be as vibrant as you want, but most of that end is going to get a little bit hidden. And then we are going to be using our small brush for the next step. So once you've got this all, your path beautifully rendered, you can put your knife away, take out your small brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're doing the first layer of our front trees. So these are going to be the bigger birch trees that are lining our path or are, you know, just in this in this bottom portion of our canvas. I'm going to have them really tall. They're all going to go straight up to the top of the canvas. Um, I'm using my I might have said medium, but this is my small brush. I'm using my small brush in order to be able to kind of control where I want them to go. We'll be using the knife later to add the details and texture to them. I suppose you could use the knife to do this first layer too, but my um, small brush will give me more control and put them where I want. So I'm going to be using white, gray, and brown to get these into place. And I'm gonna have those three colors on my brush at all times, so I have a variety of shades. I don't want these trees to be white yet because in order for me to add the um, form or the shape to them, I will be using white to do that later. So, uh, like, similar to how I did the back trees, I'm gonna have gray, brown, and white on my brush at the same time. I'm going to have maybe three or four lining this left hand side. So these are going to be much wider than those back trees. So you can make them a good inch to, you know, half of an inch to an inch wide. They're pretty straight, but you do want to give them a little bit of um, bend. You don't want them to necessarily all look like telephone poles and be super duper straight up. So I, I tend to give mine a little bit of bend. You can give them 
one or two kind of main branches coming out if you want to, but I wouldn't do that to all of them. Um, and then I'm just going to kind of go through. I think I want to have maybe one in through here and they don't all have to go right down to the path. We're going to be doing a lot of um, stuff on the forest floor in through here that is going to provide some some great um, information down at the base of the the forest so you don't have to um, make these perfect down at the bottom and again you don't have to necessarily see them 100% right now either because it all is kind of similar in um, in tones as you're going through but once we add the birch marks and the detail to it that will um, help to get them to, to um, stand out in front of all of the other stuff but you do want them to be a little bit wider than the trees in the background so I'm just going ahead and adding a little bit of width to them letting my brush kind of dictate how, what kind of movement is happening again white brown and gray are my colors on my brush I'm gonna have a really big one I would say right in through here this is gonna be my biggest of them all so this one is maybe an inch and a half to maybe even two inches wide you could really have yours super wide the wider it is the closer it's going to look to the viewer and then maybe this ha takes a little bit of a turn up in through here and of course just enjoy the process have fun with these trees they are a beautiful um you know addition to any forest especially where i live we have tons of these birch trees um, and they're just they're just so beautiful, especially in the fall with the they have these great yellow leaves on them, which is unique to to their species. Um, I think I will put maybe a smaller one in through here and get this one to go. Oh, this one's going to blend right into one of my background trees that I had. So again, these don't have to be perfect. They, you know, we're going to be putting so much more information on them later. So don't worry about them being um, anything other than a nice natural organic tree that is adorning your beautiful forest, your birch tree forest. Maybe this one's going to come a little bit farther down into the ground in through here. And then once you've got these trees, these foreground trees, all nice and completed, we're going to be switching back to our knife for the next step. So you can put this, um, this brush away wherever you'd like to. Well, that one's going a little bit dark on me, but that's all right. It'll, it'll all work out in the long run. So I'm going to put this brush away, take out my knife, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're finishing the tree trunks and branches for our birch trees. I'm gonna be using my knife. The colors that I'm gonna be using are black, brown, and white. And if I need to, I'll go into that gray, but I think I'm gonna be able to do it without it. Um, so when I do these type of trees, especially with a knife, my brain tells me just let it happen, let it happen, let it happen. Because if I try and force every single little mark in exactly the place where I want it to go, it, to me it doesn't come out as natural as if I just kind of go intuitively through it, which is just picking up the paint and saying, oh, here, 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 here. If I'm thinking about it too hard, then I end up with like, organized polka dots. Maybe it'll end up looking like a little zebra stripe-ish if I put the marks in exactly the same order on each one. So I like to really do it in a chaotic type of fashion. And I do black birch marks, then I do some white birch bark, and then I will go back and do some more black and back and do some more white. So I keep kind of flip-flopping between the two so they end up overlapping on some areas of the trees they end up looking nice and natural and we have ourselves some beautiful birch trees by the time we're done and this is pretty impressionistic too it's not intended to look like a photograph so we're just going to have fun with it I do recommend that you have that first layer of the trees dry before you start this it'll make your process a little bit easier so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to put some black paint on it and you don't need a lot just you know however you can control your tool works out I'm going to focus 
mostly on these front ones, on the ones that we put in the foreground of the forest. But I may, if I feel after I do those, I may feel that I want to add some extra branches or extra dots in the background. But for now, I'm going to just kind of focus on the ones in the front. So I'm just going to kind of take my knife, maybe reposition it in your hand. So you do a couple and then maybe you flip it over the other way. Maybe you kind of tap it, maybe you swipe it, whatever type of mark you want to make in a organic and non-organized way will make it look the most natural. So again, I just kind of keep reloading the tip of my knife and just kind of going up and down. Maybe, maybe you put it on a branch or two, giving myself these chaotic type of little marks. And if you go outside, that's okay. That'll just be an extra branch or something. You can even kind of pull it down so you have like a longer mark. Just have fun with it. Don't worry if you don't execute it perfectly. This is really the um, beautiful part about mother nature and using a knife to paint with. <laughs> it's, it's something that just allows stuff to happen in a real organic kind of way. So once I've got that started, now you could either um, wash, wipe, or use it dirty, your your um, tool. I'm just going to wipe mine on my paper towel and I'm going to pick up white paint now. So when I use the white paint, I'll probably use a little bit more because I want my white areas or my lighter areas to be larger than my black areas. So I'll use a little bit more on my on my tool. Maybe I'll even use it on the, on the longer side. And I'm going to go down the edge or the side of that of that particular tree, put in a good amount of white in a bunch of spots. I see that this is perhaps a branch over here. And then once I've kind of got a good amount of that white paint along one of the edges, what I'll do is I'll start to kind of swipe it in a little bit of a curved kind of line and your tree may end up growing. Your black marks might end up growing and that's the beautiful part about this again because you will end up with a lot of light spots and dark spots and spots you didn't plan but if you can at in some areas give it a little bit of a curve that's going to again tell that viewer that the object has a roundness to it and I'm going to add some brown in a little bit but this again for me is kind of a little bit of a building process when I'm doing these trees because I like to um, not make them look too organized so I just kind of go about it in a um, uh, it's kind of a systematic way but in, in a in a unorganized fashion so I do my little black marks then I can pull in some of the light color of the tree a, put a little bit on that on the edge of the branch and or the edge of the trunk and then you can just kind of pull it in and that's going to give you that roundness if you use it with a little bit of a curved brush stroke or a uh, tool stroke I should say and again if you bump into that that black that's totally fine I think I'm gonna I think I might add a little bit of brown here in a second my white is is turning is is making me feel like I, I want some more a little bit more dimension it's oh that's gonna that's gonna grow too we like it when our trees grow on the fly here you can with what your remnants on your brush you or on your tool you can certainly bring those edges out I missed this spot here that was a big uh, white area that I should have blended a little bit yeah this is looking pretty good I'm gonna continue up this um, this branch in through here and just kind of pull it out a little bit. And you can see, you know, I'm not getting the whole tree right now. I'm really just kind of concentrating on getting some of this lightness in here. I will come back and do some more um, birch marks. I'll come back with a little bit of brown so I can have some dirtiness to, to my um, tree. So it's not all stark white, but because I have that, um, 
the gray underneath it, it's provided me with a lot of great dimension to it. And if you had, if you're doing um, your forest and you have a really evident area where the sun or where a light source is coming through, you could certainly really concentrate the light color on one side of the tree and have the other side of the tree really dark with more of the gray or more of brown. So feel free to um, play with your light source a little bit if you wanted to. We don't really have a distinct one on this um, painting just because we're kind of deep in the forest, but if you um, felt that you needed to or wanted to add any kind of more dimension onto these trees with having one side lighter or darker than the other, you could certainly, you could certainly do that. And I'm going to start to add my brown here in a minute, but again, just kind of wanted to get this first pass of these trees and you can see how they're just they're just coming to life every every little mark i make i like using these knives because it really just kind of takes the pressure off of having to make a perfect execution every time you just kind of let that that shape happen some sometimes your tree is going to grow sometimes it's going to you know take on a really unique look that you did not expect and i just always embrace the unexpected when you're using a tool like this the trick for me is just making sure that i give these trees enough contrast so we can see them in front of the other stuff that's in this painting because I don't want them to all be of the same tonal value and then lose the uh, the effect or lose the visual um, look of them. So I'm going to start adding a little bit of brown on my tool right now. I didn't wash my tool. I'm just kind of picking up some some brown. I want to add a little bit. So I have brown and white on my on my tool right now just kind of I, I, I don't want to say accidentally because I planned them to both be on there, but just so you know that um, I do have a combination of those two colors on my on my tool in order to get some some real nice um, again just natural tones. I know that these trees are inherently white, or our brain tells us that they are pretty white. But just like anything in nature, there's always going to be lots of different variations and tones and, and um, hues and all different kinds of stuff when it comes to a tree, especially when there's, you know, bark on it. So this bark can have brown in it, even though our eye tells us that birch trees are white, it can certainly have some brown in it. And then once I've got some brown notes throughout that throughout that tree trunk, I think I might come back with a, a little bit of um, maybe a couple more birch marks and then just do a final pass of white to make sure that I've got as much um, information in these in these trunks and these branches as I want. And again, if you wanted to, you could add more information into it. I think I'm just going to add, I'm not going to add too many more birch marks. I just wiped my tool off and I'm picking up a little bit of black. Just kind of want to make sure I've got a couple in through here. And then I'm going to just add a little bit more white, I think, just to kind of come back and make sure that I've got as much white in here as I want. And, you know, again, if you, if you go over too much of your, um, your birch marks or your tree grows as much as mine is growing, you can certainly just pick up a little bit of black and add it back in. So don't feel like a, a mistake is a mistake. It's just part of mother nature. Just, just embrace it. Let it happen. I'm adding just a little bit more lightness into some of these trees so they can, um, make sure that they stand out in front of that background. You could really have some thicker trees or some thicker paint. It's really, you know, these are these are fun trees. They've got a lot of a lot of characteristics that are just really fun to incorporate into a painting, especially when you're using this fun tool as I'm using. And then once we've got these main trees with as much information as you want, we're going to be, um, let's see, what's our next tool going to be? Let's utilize this same tool 
for the next step. So once you've got these main trees as light and bright as you want with as many little birch marks, I might sit and fiddle with mine a bit more so you can certainly do the same with yours. Just make sure that you can really see them in front of the, um, the background colors. And then you'll just wanna wash this little tool as of course I'm really having a hard time stopping right now. <laughs> you'll wash this tool and then just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna be painting the shadows and sticks within the forest floor. And then if we want any additional sticks or branches in the um, background, we can do that too. So I'm gonna be using my knife and I'm gonna be using mostly black, but I might also use some white. And if I choose to use any other colors, I'll let you know. I'm gonna start with just black on my knife. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a really dark area where the path meets these trees in through here. So I've got black on my knife and I'm just kind of going right along the edge of my path. And you can go all the way in through um, the area that it disappears behind the trees. So you can kind of give yourself a little bit of a line in through there. You could even put a little bit in through here just to give the visual information to the viewer that this path kind of travels back in through here. And then what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be pulling up. You can pull up with the corner, you can kind of swipe with the side of your brush. I'm really just looking to give myself some sticks or um, foliage of sorts that is coming up from the floor of the, of the, um, of the forest. So I'm just utilizing the side or the um, corner of that, of that tool to bring some shadows or darkness into the base of the floor, which is in through here, and then also pulling up some sticks or you know pieces of grass or whatever you want to call them. But you can almost kind of rub it to the side or pull it up from those wet areas to give these block mass areas of darkness. And then you can utilize the side of that tool to pull up in various directions or scrape it in, an, in essence to get these um, longer, more, um, slender pieces coming up from that shadowed area that you created at the at the floor. You can have them coming in front of the um, of the tree. You can even have them going behind the tree. So you could have yourself some areas behind that tree that look like it's darkness on the floor and then just kind of pulling it up in various directions. So you have fun with this area in through here. I'm gonna pull some of these up pretty darn high, maybe up, you know, about halfway up my canvas, something like this. And if you bump into your tree, great. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and do a little bit down in this area too. So again, I want, I want some stuff to look like it's on the edge of my path. So I'm going to put some pieces. I've got the black on my on my tool right now and I'm just going to kind of pull up some various pieces in through here. You can pull them up right in front of your path so you can have your tool kind of giving you some some little marks in through here and then you can take it and just kind of pull it up in front of that path and that's going to give you the illusion of the path you know, kind of going around the corner because these marks you're making in through here are on our side of the path. And of course, using this tool again is gonna make it nice and chaotic and give you a lot of um, different ways to, to make those marks, bring a couple in front of that tree. That's gonna make that look really nice and natural. And then of course, I'm gonna do the same thing in this area in through here. You can give yourself some little markers up in through here, get my tool to work the way that I want it. There we go. In through here, kind of lining that path, bringing a couple of pieces up in through there, and then of course as many pieces as I want on my forest floor. And I'm thinking of these as the shadowy pieces um, or just sticks. So I, I'm 
embracing the the darkness of them because we're going to have all kinds of little foliage and stuff on top of them but i'm also leaving some of that gray to um to work as another layer of color within the forest floor so i'm not covering it up all the way i'm i'm embracing it and letting it letting it work in with this gray or with the black and then i am going to pull some of these um, marks or sticks or whatever up into my um, background because I feel like I want some more sticks up in through my um, my trees. So I just wiped my brush off on my paper towel. I'm picking up some white and I'm going to just kind of go crazy with some almost um, carefree little sticks and stuff in through the top. This is almost like a abstract type of approach to um, adding some additional movement to the to the background here you could certainly use white with um, some of your gray if you wanted to but this would help to kind of fill in some gaps if you felt like you wanted some more branches you could put some sideways branches up in these um, in the leaf area that's going to add a lot of movement and a lot of dimension to that that background so feel free to have fun with that you can you know if you feel like you went too far on any of them just bring some darkness in through there or we'll hide it with leaves later so don't feel that if you did something that it can't be strategically hidden <laughs> do some to the sides do some on top of ones that you might not have liked too much and then we are going to be utilizing our large brush for the next step so once you've got all these fun sticks and shadows and depth within your forest floor you can uh, put your your knife away take out your large brush and get ready for the next step all right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are finishing our leaves on the tops of our trees. I'm gonna be using predominantly yellow and white, but you might feel that you wanna use a little bit of that brown again. Wherever you wanna, whatever brightness you wanna take your leaves in is totally up to you. I am gonna start with a bunch of yellow on my brush. I am gonna really just be dotting this on in a very heavy fashion. Um, but I do want to leave some of that dimensional element to the painting. So I don't want to go over all of my branches. I don't want to cover up all of my trunks. I just really am looking for that extra dimensional element to tell me that there's some leaves on this side of these trees as well as on the other side. So I'm just putting a bunch of yellow right now. In a second, I'm going to pick up some white as well and i'm going to bring some of this down you know maybe about a third of the way down my my canvas i'm overlapping some of these in front of my um my branches but not again i'm not overdoing it because i want to see th i want to see that dimensional element that we had that we've you know kind of worked pretty hard to create so i'm just kind of giving myself some areas where it you know is kind of trailing down maybe i'll have a little section over here and now i'm going to start to pick up white plus yellow and again i'm using quite a bit i want this to look nice and textured and it's got some vibrancy to it you can have you know, yours more white or more yellow. It's really up to you. I'm having mine, you know, the brightest and the thickest up at the top, which we discussed earlier. So it looks like it's almost like a canopy of sorts um, leading into, into the forest, but you could certainly have yours come down further. You can, you know, get this to look as birchy autumn as you want it to be. You might even choose to do a couple of layers on yours. So know that this is totally up to you. You could incorporate other colors into it too. I, I know that the traditional color for birch trees, autumn birch trees is yellow and white, but some of them do tend can steer on the orange side so if you want to incorporate that or have a different kind of tree maybe 
um, incorporated, feel free to do so. And then we are going to be utilizing this same brush for the next step. So once you've got your beautiful leaves on the tops of your trees, you can wash and dry this large brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the forest floor. So this is gonna be any leaves or shrubs or anything that you want to add to this. What I am looking to do is just add some autumn color and some, some deep forest colors. So I am going to be using my large brush. I'm gonna be using green, red, yellow and white and if I want to add any additional colors I certainly will. I'm going to have mine pretty darn dark down at the bottom right and pretty darn dark over in through here but as I move my way towards the path and maybe up behind these trees and through here I'm going to be adding a little bit extra sparkle and light as if perhaps there's something that's illuminating them a little bit. So I'm going to start with a very little bit of green. So at, conversely, when we were doing the leaves up at the top, I was using a lot of paint. Now I'm using very little bit of paint because I wanna be able to kind of build this on the fly with multiple colors. So if I was to use a ton of green and want to build something on top of that, I would typically have to wait if I was using a lot of paint. But because I'm just gonna use a little paint and I just want a little hue or a little, um, accent of the green, I'm not using a lot of paint, just a little bit of paint on my brush. I'm gonna be using this stippling type of technique. I'm gonna be adding some green up and through here. You can bring it right to the edges of your trees. And you do wanna bring it right to the edges of your trees as if the tree is sitting in front. You don't wanna leave a negative space along the sides of your trees because that'll make it look like you painted them on top. You wanna to make sure that whatever you're doing, you kind of incorporate that tree to make the tree look like it's in front of it. So again, I brought this up about halfway up my canvas. You could certainly bring it up a little bit higher. And then as I'm coming, um, or paint right on top of your tree, <laughs> if you paint on top of your tree, you can always go back and fix it later. Um, then as I'm coming down towards this right side, I'm going to bring these down a little bit further. And again, I'm not using a lot of paint. I'm keeping the green more towards the top side of my um, foliage as opposed to bringing it all the way down to my path. I'll put some in through here. Very little bit of paint on my brush right now just to give me the hint of this green color. I'm going to stick a little bit in between these two trees. I'm going to put a little bit back in through here and again you can really put it as much or as you know heavy as you want to but this is how i'm kind of approaching it and put a little bit on this side when you get to this side or you know and really anywhere in the forest floor you can certainly go in front of your trees with your foliage but make sure it looks like that's what supposed to happen like the foliage is in front if i took this green that I want to look set back and put it in front of the trees, then it would, you know, look like it's in front, but I want that green to look like it's in back. So you can go in front of your trees if you want to, but where you want to, you know, where it makes sense to, like here would make sense to me. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just wipe my brush off on my paper towel and I'm picking up a little bit of red paint. So again, I'm gonna utilize red right now as my second kind of color within my forest, but I still am gonna to wanna to build some stuff on top of it too. So I'm not using a lot on my brush right now. As I come down into where it's gonna be close to us, I might use a little bit more so it's, um, I can have it kind of leaning over and having it have a little bit more thickness to it. But where I feel like I'm gonna to want to add to it or, um, put another layer with maybe yellow and white on it, I'm not gonna be utilizing a lot. I just really wanna get that color on there. I'm bringing this all the way up so my tree looks like it is um, sitting in front. And of course, you can really have fun with this. I mean, this doesn't have to be, yours doesn't have to be exactly as mine. I'm trying to leave some of those sticks showing underneath. I, right here, I just am putting it in front of my tree. 
over here. I'm going to have it hanging over. So this red can be in front or in back of your trees. You really have fun with, you know, utilizing it wherever you would like to on yours. And I am overlapping it a little bit in front of the black. So that way the black really um, speaks to it as being the shadowy area, that black. And then um, you, the red will be translucent. So you'll be able to see that black right through it. And I'm putting a little bit back in through here. And then I'm going to go ahead and put some in through this area and through here. I think I'm going to put a bunch down in through here as if maybe lots of red leaves have kind of fallen on that on that floor of the of the um, forest. Maybe I'll put some in through here. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Feel free to make this into your own um, kind of putting those leaves on the sides of the trees. Again, we'll get those trees to pop out a little bit. I'm still utilizing that gray underneath to add that extra dimensional element. I think I want to bring this red up in through here as if it's kind of coming up the outside of the um, of this tree and maybe kind of wrapping in front of it. Yeah, that looks pretty. And then I'm going to put a whole bunch in through here. Maybe put a little bit more in front of this tree. Again, that's going to give you some fun dimensional elements when you can put it in front of the tree as well. Putting some on the tips of these, like it's kind of leaning over our pathway in through here. And I'm just kind of using the corner of my brush to get these little um, edges to the the um, foliage that we're, we're putting in here. And this is an imaginary place for me. This doesn't, it's not meant to represent any specific kind of plants or flowers or anything at the bottom of the forest floor. I'm just doing what I feel looks good. So I like the red down here, so I'm putting lots of red. I'm gonna, in a second, I'm, I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. I think I want more to kind of hang over in through here too. Let's get, let's give a big area to hang over in through here. Um, so you can really make yours as, you know, fancy and as colorful as you want. Just go with what is really speaking to you as the artist. You don't, you know, the, again, there's no rules. We, we, we as artists get to make this into whatever is visually appealing in our own painterly um, mind. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush right now because I want to incorporate some yellow. So washing and drying my brush. I could use red and yellow and make an orange, but I think I want to go pretty vibrant with my yellow. So I just added a bunch of yellow to my brush and I'm going to kind of give me some tips up in through here. And I want to incorporate a little bit of this yellow in quite a few places on my in my forest. So now's the time as I'm getting towards these lighter colors, now's the time where I start kind of loading up my brush a little bit more because I know that I'm not going to necessarily need or want to put more paint on top of this yellow. So if it's that final color for you, you can really load up on it and put a bunch on your brush and just start kind of stippling and dotting and giving it that um, that textured kind of look that you that you might be attempting to achieve. And again, I'm not covering up all of my red. I'm just using this yellow as a beautiful accent or another kind of color that complements the um, top of the painting where the, the yellow has um, adorned the whole top. So this just brings, ties the, the whole painting together. I'm gonna put some of that yellow in through here, some on these tips going towards the edge of our pathway. And then I'll put some on the tips of these and through here. I'm gonna pop a little bit of white on them in a minute, but right now I'm just kind of getting, I might have a, a accidentally a little white on my brush right now anyways, but um, for the most part, it's just yellow on my brush. I'm just kind of getting these brighter pieces and I'm trying to kind of keep some of this brighter stuff towards the top of my foliage so it, um, makes it look like wherever that light source is coming from is, you know, at, at the top and is kind of illuminating um, some of this foliage. I think I might want a little green in here too. Let's, let's on the fly pop a, little, pop a little green in through this area. I felt like there wasn't 
enough color variation down here. So I just added a little bit of green with my yellow and white on my brush and just wipe my brush off on my paper towel so I can pick up some more of my yellow. And uh, you know, that's, that's it. You know, I felt like I wanted green there. So I picked up green and put it there. You know, it gave me that excitement to have that extra bit of color down there. So that's what I did. And now that I've got my yellow on in as many places as I want, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white with my yellow. I did not wash my brush, so I just picked up some white. And I'm gonna add a bit of highlight going um, down my pathway here. So I just picked up some white and I will just gently tap it in here so I can have some real um, nice highlights as we're maybe making our way around this corner into the, you know, the other part of the path. But you could certainly have fun with yours, you know, build it in whatever kind of color scheme that you want. I'm gonna definitely put some nice lightness back in through here. And if this ends up being too similar to your background, just make it, you know, maybe like a light yellow. Like I just put a little bit more yellow on my brush with the white so you can really see it back there. Sometimes when we're do, doing a step like this, if you want that contrast, and if it's not popping the way that you want to, you just need to add a bit more um, lightness or darkness to it and that'll that'll get it to read as bright as you want it to or um, in the, the contrast that you want it to. And then we have one little step left to go and it's gonna be with our small brush. So once you've got this, your forest floor all nice and decorated the way that you want, you can put your large brush away take out your small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm using red paint for this uh, signature. You could certainly use whatever color you want. I do my initials, but you could certainly do your first name or the date or a symbol or whatever you'd like. It's your painting. You sign it however you'd like. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself a very beautiful seasonal scenery, and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime. <laughs>